Hello, I'm a couple minutes early, but I want to do that just to make sure everyone is on board because I don't have anyone helping in the chat box today, although I see Don and Alyssa are there, so I'm sure that it'll all be great. Okay, um, but I just wanted to start it a little bit earlier and make sure we have the sound and the video worked out that you can all hear and push play. I, I can see the chat box and I tried typing something, but it won't let me log in. It's not registering my password and I spent like five minutes trying to get Chatango working where I could type into it and I was, just gave up. I said, never mind, I'm just gonna start the video. So if you guys can type in there that um, you are seeing and hearing me, I see there are 30 people in the chat and 11 people on the video. So I think that means people need to hit play and I know that there is a delay. Also, um, if you are viewing this on Google Plus or on YouTube instead of in on my site on Simplified Organization, then in order to for me to see your questions, um, you're going to have to hop onto my site to view it there. All right, great. Thanks for letting me know. Um, so if you're viewing this on YouTube or on Google Plus on the event page, that's great. You're welcome to, but if you want to participate in the chat or ask me questions, I'm only going to be keeping track of one place, and that's the Chat Tango chat box, which is on the site. So you should have gotten the email that has the link. Uh, so I sent out a couple emails because the first email I sent out did not have the link. <laughs> um, so you can get that link um, and hop on over. It's simplifiedorganization.com slash, actually I didn't look this up beforehand. Um, it's, I didn't make it an easy one. Um, email, QA email email so simplified organization.com slash email dash QA dash chat and that's where you can watch live and um, see the chat box and ask questions live so all right I see people are coming in and letting me know that you can hear me that is great so just a reminder as you ask questions especially if they're like troubleshooting specific situations in order to answer specific questions I have to know um, you know if it's Windows or Mac what browser um, if you're talking about a desktop laptop or a mobile device and then also what kind of email you have you know are you using Gmail are you using Yahoo or you have a different email address and you're using downloading through Outlook uh, I have to know those specifics in order to know how to troubleshoot specific issues so if you can include that in your questions that would be really helpful all right so we still have a couple of minutes until we go live. Uh, I'm gathering my notes and drinking my water. <laughs> um, so I know that people have a lot of questions about archiving and a lot of questions about folders and labels. And I have to recant something about pocket. <laughs> so that's all fun. <laughs> I send something out to, you know, hundreds of people and I get emails back. I'm like, actually, that didn't work for me. Oh, that, never mind. <laughs> so that's the kind of things that we'll talk about today. I had one lady email me and say that she, instead of archiving, she accidentally hit delete on, you know, hundreds of emails. So, <sighs> yikes, yikes. But we fixed it. We got all our emails back, though. So that's something we can talk about today. What to do if you accidentally hit delete instead of archive, because they are very, very different actions. So, yes, that was pretty bad, but we got it fixed for her. So that's good. We got all our emails back or Gmail technical support got all her emails back for her in less than an hour. So it is possible to recover your emails if you accidentally delete them. It's amazing what you can find out by a quick Google search, right? <laughs> Quickly, can I get my Gmail emails back? And 
pops up. Yep, you sure can. Just contact them here. Whew, that was a relief. <laughs> All right, a monster made a dent in the monster project. That's excellent. Yay. So to start off this. All right. <laughs> so to start off this Q&A chat on email, I would love to know My computer keeps automatically turning my mute button on. I don't know why. I don't know what what's accidentally being hit. Okay, hopefully we will not have technical issues as we do this. So to start off this live Q&A chat on email issues and techniques and tricks for managing your inbox, I would love to know how many emails you have archived, how many emails were in your inbox that are no longer in your inbox. So what was your original number that you started with and how many are you at now? It doesn't have to be zero. You know, my inbox is almost never actually zero, but you know, as long as we're able to see the emails that we actually have to handle, then that's what's important. Then we can manage our inbox and really use it as a tool instead of just another place where we keep chaos and clutter, another place that we avoid because of decision fatigue. All right. All right, Don, you say you have zero in your inbox and zero archived. So are you just, all, you are already an email whiz? All right, Alyssa says she started off with 2,500. Brooke says she started at a little over 5,000 and she's currently, is that 2,071 or is that 2.071 emails? I would love to know what a 0 0.07 email is. No, not inbox. So you haven't started. You just haven't archived anything. Let's see. I'm a little confused. Okay. You've emptied. Okay. So Mrs. H says that she's emptied her email every f few years, but never archived things. So she started out at 450 and now has one. So that's awesome. Courtney's inbox is at 23. 2,000, all right, still, Brooke, that's more than half taken care of. Doesn't that feel good? I mean, that's still a big number, but it's big progress percentage-wise. Haven't archived ever. So you, do you not even know how many emails are in there? You've lost count, Google has lost count. <laughs> that would be a great place to start, actually, is why archive, I got lots of people questioning that by email. And before we can answer that and why archive your emails instead of deleting them or instead of just letting them sit in the inbox, um, I have to clarify that archiving is primarily a feature of Gmail and not, so in Yahoo and Hotmail, you cannot archive. So if you've been trying to look for it in Yahoo or Hotmail, um, or Juno, I think, I'm pretty sure, um, you don't have that feature. So you can set a file and call it archive and move emails there. Um, but for Gmail, you have the archive feature, which is much different than delete and much better than leaving those in your inbox. All right, we have another person saying they were at 13,000 emails in their inbox and now she's at 6,075. That's huge progress, good job. All right, so just make a folder called archive in Yahoo. That's right, thanks Courtney, you're here anyway. <laughs> Okay, 5,700 emails in different inboxes. Okay, down to 1,400 about in archives. So you don't even need to worry about how many emails are in your, in, in, in your archive, whether that's a folder or whether you're actually archiving in Gmail. So here's how I'd like to picture it. You have... Um, the you have the email 
come into your inbox. So let's picture this as actual pieces of paper. Each email is an actual like envelope, a piece of mail. Think of your inbox as the mailbox. It's where they arrive. You don't leave your mail out in your mailbox. You bring it in and then you deal with it, right? You either throw it away or you know you write a reply, you file it, you whatever with it. You do whatever needs to be done with it. So we have to treat our email the same way because a lot of times it's the exact same thing that used to come by mail. A lot of it now comes by email and the process really doesn't have to be that different. It's the same concept even though it's digital instead of paper. It arrives in your inbox, your mailbox, and then you have to do something with it. It's not meant to live in the inbox. That's just the place that says, look, you have something to take care of. Hello, you have something to take care of. Hello, you have something to take care of. <laughs> it's If it's in your inbox, it's pestering you to do something with it. That's what the inbox is for. So we have to move things out of the inbox if there's nothing that you're going to do with it. So the inbox is the arrival place or maybe you have a place on your kitchen counter where it's like, okay, this arrived in my house. I can't do anything with it yet. You know, say it's a bill. I can't write the check and put it back in the mail right now. I'm going to put it here where it's going to stay in front of my face and I can deal with it. it. You know, the highly visible place. I have to do something with this. You stick it there. Your inbox is also that place too. But the more, I'm sure that we've all experienced this, the more stuff just gets put in that, oh, important, take care of this sometime. If we just shove things there and let them stay there, then we just are more likely to actually avoid it and miss the deadlines, miss the things we should have been doing. Uh, it's just not a great strategy for keeping up with our responsibilities and for doing what needs to be done with our emails. So we have to take it out of that highly visible nagging me place and put it where they belong, whether that's writing the reply and getting and responding in that way, in which case if you've done the reply and you've sent it off, then it should move out of your inbox because you've, you've done what needs to be done. Even if you're uh, waiting for someone to reply to you, when they reply to you, it'll pop back in your inbox, right? So you can move it out. Um, so your inbox is where you put things that you have to deal with. The archive feature then is like moving those pieces of mail into the storage room, not into the dumpster but into a storage room. It's out of your kitchen. It's not on your kitchen counter. It's not just moving them over to another pile. It's removing them and putting them down in the basement. <laughs> and you're saying, but if I put anything down in my basement storage area, I'm never gonna find it again. I might as well have trashed it. And that's true with paper, but because this is digital information and because I'm thinking of Gmail, you know, you have Google search. So that's like your Google search is like your magnet that is magnetized to whatever your search term is. And it, you can like hold it up to the door of your storage room and zoom, 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 it'll pull out of that big junk pile just exactly what you wanted. It's magic and it's amazing. It would be great if that were actually true with real stuff <laughs> that's down in my storage room. That would be amazing. But it's a great feature of digital information is that search feature. So you can just throw the stuff down there and it'll come back to you when you need it. It's not trashed. It's not forever gone. It's just waiting if you need it. You don't think you need it, but it's there in case you do want to look something up again. Okay. Um, Yes, so make sure as I'm going along, as you have questions, pop them in the chat box because there is some delay. So um, add your questions now and I can make sure and um, get to them. All right, so Mama Rachel is um, reminding us of the boomerang. I tried that for a little bit and I didn't spend the time troubleshooting it to get it to work, but it is cool. You can add, it's a plugin extension to Gmail called boomerang 
where you can get emails out of your inbox, but it'll put them back in your inbox in, you know, five, whatever time frame you say. So if you're like, I want this, I know I need to deal with this, but I can't deal with it right now. I, I have, I'm not going to be able to do anything with it until next week. Then you can actually, I would just let that sit there until next week. And I, I still see it there. You're saying, yep, I've got to deal with that. But you could with Boomerang, get it out of your inbox and it'll pop back into your inbox as an unread message when you tell it to. So that's pretty cool. Boomerang is a neat thing. Uh, yeah, and it's in the new inbox um, app or way of using Gmail, Gmail inbox, which is cool for some people and not so cool for others. It really depends on how you use your email and what kind of emails you get. Uh, it has some really awesome features, but um, labels and stars don't work as well with it. So if you already have, like I do, kind of this starring system, it just doesn't move over and mesh with that. But if you don't really have a style or a way of using emails yet, then you know hopping on over and trying out Gmail inbox uh, would be I would be worth trying out because it has some really cool features that they walk you through and show you how to use. Okay. So, all right. Courtney is asking about online classes, emails from online classes. Yes. I don't want to forget about them because if they're out of sight, they're out of mind. Very true. They clog, but they clog up the inbox and they're not things that you really need to take action on. It's, it's like read later, right? So there are a couple of different ways that you can handle that. You can have them in your inbox. And um, I do that if it's like I need, like this isn't just in a course that I want to do someday or keep up with, but not really. Hey, Ilsa, would you mind turning on the light for me? Thank you. Um, there, <laughs> much better. Um, that I really want to watch this video or read this article. I really should today, then it's going to stay in my inbox. But if it's, this is good information, but I just don't have the time right now, or I might read it right now, but I also want to keep it, keep it. I want to not lose this information, not just put it down into that pile of nothing downstairs. Then um, you can move it into a label, give it a label, like have a label called online courses. And then whenever you have time to learn and research, then you have the place to go to and they'll all come up. And then you can set up a filter even so those automatically get that label and it's not something you have to do. Or you can send them to Evernote and then you say, all right, I have time to work on the class. Then you can go to Evernote. Now, then the question is, well, am I ever going to remember to check that label or Evernote or wherever it is I'm moving them? And then that's not so much an email problem as you know, forgetfulness. So you need a kind of reminder, whether that's setting up an email reminder, a reminder on your phone, a reminder on your calendar, a reminder on however you use reminders. You could set up a reminder. You can have reminders in Evernote, actually. So you can say, I, you know, look at this on Saturdays. So you can have something pop up and say, make sure and check out the online classes stuff you've been saving on Saturdays or whatever. Or you can add the class as a task in your task management system, or you know, put it in your bullet journal. Uh, this arrived today, or I'm working through this. Make sure and check it. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things. There isn't a perfect solution, especially because we get so deluged by email and information. We just have to pick a system, pick a place to keep it, and if it's all kept together, then we'll start to grow accustomed to using it that way. All right. Let's see, internet receipts. That's a good one. That's a great one. Okay. Um, sending emails. To, yes. Okay. So let me finish, though, explaining archive and why you would want to use that instead of deleting. Um, I had a couple specific questions by that about that on email. And so I wanted to clarify. When you put some, when you say you put a label on something in Gmail and then archive it, the label stays. So if you, you receive an email, you've read it, you put a label on it, then you archive it. 
So it's in your archive with the label. The archiving an email does not, rem or, yeah, archiving an, a labeled email does not remove the label. When an email has a label and is not in your inbox, it is in the archive with that label, and that label is basically a quick search. So you hit the label and it pops up all those emails that you have labeled that. All right. So uh, let me know if you have any more questions about labels. All right. Oh, okay. One person here says that she has a waiting for label where she puts order confirmations. So then she can go through and make sure that she's received her orders. That's a great, especially at Christmas time or uh, more for me when I'm making homeschool orders in the summer, it can be easy to lose track of what I've ordered. So that's a great strategy. Um, what labels do I have? I don't use labels a ton. Um, but I have kind of this category in my head. So I have a label for sales that I make of my courses or eBooks. So those never come to my inbox. because That would be highly distracting to me. <laughs> so I make those skip my inbox and they just have a label. And so I can check that and see, but those aren't coming into my inbox because I don't really have to do anything about them and I shouldn't be distracted by them. So those never hit my inbox, they just get a label that I can see on my sidebar if I'm in the browser. But I don't even see them if I'm checking it on my mobile or anything, and that helps if I'm just looking, like checking on my phone during school or whatever, then I'm not distracted, not distracted. <laughs> um, if you got the emails, let's see. Um, I made, I made an extra video, and I'm trying to remember if I included it in the last email or not, where I set up a homeschool reading label uh, in response to a specific question to show how you would use a label as you know setting up something for online courses. This one, the example was homeschool reading. So if you didn't get that video, I'll make sure and send that out. <laughs> Just realized, I know I send it to a few people who asked the question, and I'm not sure I included it then in the final email or not. Um, okay. Dawn says she uses labels for sports so that she can see everything from all of the coaches in one place. So that's a great thing. Um, I also have a label for each of my blogs. So if someone sends, um, a question that I might use as a blog post idea, or they send feedback about something about the site, or you know it's a fan letter something like that then i save those with the blog label so i can pull up you know, that's something that i would not really be able to search for so i'll use a label if i wouldn't really be able to search easily for what i'm looking for and um if people send me if someone sends me an email asking a question that i might turn into a blog post you know i can't really search for that you know so I, I give it a label so that I can find those. But I also can't set up a filter with that. I have to do that manually. I get the email and I say, oh, this would make a good blog post idea. I'll put this label on it. Um, I do love filters. I, um, so if it's a, like the sales, I, can, I have a filter that sets that up. I created a filter for sales emails. So for instance, um, most of my husband's clothes, because he's he's a size that is not sold at stores, he wears size, his pants are size 32, 36. So they don't sell 36 length pants in stores, period. So we have to order them online and we order them from Eddie Bauer. And his favorite shirts come from Van Heusen. So we have these places where we make orders online. So I'm on their email list and I don't want all those sales emails because some of them send one or two a day <laughs> and i make clothes orders about twice a year so i filter those out into a sales folder it does it automatically with a filter and then when it comes time to order something online i can open that up and see um, what sales are going on right now if they did a discount code if it kind of looks like they haven't sent one out in a while, so maybe I should wait a few days and look again, that sort of thing. I, I don't unsubscribe from the sales emails of places where I actually purchase things. I just set up a filter 
and a special label for those, and it's called sale emails, sales. Um, and so that's where those go. So they don't hit my inbox. I don't get distracted. You know, the whole point of those emails is actually to make you want to order something, and I would rather decide that I need something and then go look at it rather than get be bombarded by those bye, bye, bye emails. Worried I'll miss something if I filter. Well, I it's not like that has never happened, actually, as uh, Courtney actually knows because I missed an invoice from her once because of a filter. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> so that was a filter gone wrong. I filter PayPal emails out of my inbox because you know when people buy something there's like four emails that are generated one from my site and two from paypal it, it just gets crazy or when i buy something online then i get you know four email there's so many emails that come from one purchase from things online no matter which end i'm on that's like I don't need to see these PayPal emails. So I filter them out and I have a special, well, actually I don't even have a special label. They just get filtered out of inbox because it's easy to search PayPal, right? But I never see them. So then um, I'd say, Courtney, you never sent me an invoice. <laughs> I need to pay you for helping me. And she says, yes, I did. So then I searched uh, PayPal invoice. Oh, look, there it is. Um, so I changed my filter after that, and now those are not skipped. <laughs> All the others, but you can usually find a way. I, so I think I added a filter that said, if the subject says invoice, never skip inbox. So sometimes you have to kind of build a layering system, have multiple filters. So now I have two PayPal filters, one that just says, all PayPal emails skip my inbox. And the other one says, if it, if it's from PayPal and it says invoice in the subject, then never skip the inbox. And that one will override, I think you can hit, does this one override other filters? And you can do that, but uh, I'm not gonna tell you that uh, you can get it right out of the gates. Sometimes you do, you still have to kind of know when to expect something. Uh, or like I, the story I shared where my emails were uh, accidentally archived out of my inbox. I had to go back and find them and I was very glad that I had starred them because then I could use a search to, you know, is starred and find those emails again. Yes. Okay, I recently added a purchase soon label um, that has sale expiration dates. That's great. That's a great idea. Okay. How do you send a reminder through Gmail? Actually, I think that's that's within the new Gmail inbox app which was one reason why my husband really liked it, but I just, that was a great feature, but not worth it to switch for me. Um, but you can also use reminders, the, like the reminders app. And I think that, okay, I don't know. I think that the Android reminders, I mean, Android is Google. So I, somehow that might all be connected. I don't know. I shouldn't say things I don't know about. Okay. Um, how can you, okay, I think that this one must have, might have a typo. Let's see, how can you features of a label after you have created, if I now want it to go straight to folder? So in Gmail, a label is a folder. Um, okay, it looks like that video where I created a label with a filter um, didn't go out. So I'll make sure that goes out to everyone um, later on today with the replay of this. Okay, bank emails in a pending deposits label. That's a great idea. Okay, a waiting for label. Yes, so uh, sending emails to Evernote. Um, so getting an Evernote email address where you can forward an email straight into Evernote. That used to be free and a month or two ago they changed their pricing structure and have they now have a free tier, a middle tier, and a high tier. And that having that email address that you can forward things to or even use to subscribe to blogs instead so they did, wouldn't hit your inbox, they get sent straight to Evernote. That's actually how I archive my own writing, is I have my Evernote email subscribed to my blogs. 
So all my emails when they, or all my blog posts, when they post, go straight into my Evernote archive. Um, but that's now in the middle tier. So you do have to pay at something like two or three dollars a month, and there's a discount if you pay annually. So you I don't know, you you have to decide whether or not you'll use it enough to make it worth paying for. I definitely do. <laughs> um, okay. A label called receipts. That's good. Um, so then there are some things that instead of labeling and keeping in Gmail, I send over to Evernote and save there. To me, the way I make the distinction in my mind is um, I send it to Evernote if it's something that in the if I were a paper person, I would print it and file it and keep it. I would keep it in you know, a collection of articles. I, I still have a few, few of these from before I went all digital, you know, binders that just have my favorite blog posts printed out. And I'm so glad I have that because there are some blogs that are down now where they've, the authors of the blog totally took all their content down and I had favorite blog posts. And because back in the day I printed those, the ones that I really, really liked, then I have them still. Same with Evernote. It's not a link. It's act the actual content is there. So things that in the past I would have printed out and put in a binder to look at again or put in a file. So something like um, receipts then that... I would probably throw away after a few months if it was a paper receipt, like grocery store receipts, Costco receipts that don't have an important purchase on them. Um, those just get that label or get archived and they don't, you know, if I needed them, they're there, but I'm not gonna be keeping track of them. But then emails that I need to keep for tax purposes or receipts I need to keep for tax purposes or that have a bigger purchase that I want to keep a record of, those go say those get saved into Evernote. Evernote is like my file cabinet or binder. Whereas a label is just a quicker way to make a search in the archive if I did need to find that again, if that makes sense. All right, let's see. Yes, clip to Evernote is I, I'm pretty sure that still works even in their Gmail inbox, if you're checking your email on the web, you know what, I know you can still see me, but I'm seeing my email inbox and I'm just double checking that. If I click the little elephant, um, that actually clips the email, it does. So you can just use the Evernote web clipper and not um, have, if you just wanna save some emails into Evernote and it not have it, it won't, you can't set up a filter with that, of course, but if you just do it a few times manually, you can use the web clipper instead of forwarding that. Okay, and you can also do that from Outlook. That is great. So that's a great way to keep using Evernote free, um, the free version. All right, so I think we covered filters and archiving and labels. Um, Let's see, I wanted to make sure I didn't miss this one that was asked, this left in the comment box this morning. Um, I'm going to clean and sort out my in inbox, but how do I have my email system sync to my devices and vice versa? All right, yeah, that really, really depends on what email you're using and um, you know what devices you're using. For the most part, you, you can have your emails sync across devices. Uh, I'm not sure how Outlook uses that or how they sync, but I'm pretty sure that um, they do. You would What you would wanna do is do a Google search and say, how do I sync and use your main email, whether that's how do I sync my Yahoo account? How do I sync my Outlook account? How do I sync my Windows, whatever? two and then whatever your other device is and that will almost always pull up even step-by-step -step instructions on that gmail page where you don't even have to click to a result it'll just tell you right there 
the step-by-step -step instructions because it's going to be different for every device and every kind of email. All right. Is the Evernote Web Clipper clearly? Web Clipper and Clearly are different, but they do practically the same things. So it depends on which one is easier for you to use and install. They're pretty much the same thing. But I mean, they're different. It's not two names for the exact same thing. They're two separate things, but they do the same thing pretty much. So um, yes, so Clearly, uh, Web Clipper has options where you can save it simplified or the entire screen or just a selection and then the clearly app or extension pretty much just saves that um, whoop, saves the simplified version which is the only version I ever save on something so all right have you used Outlook or Windows Inbox? They don't seem to be as user friendly. I agree. <laughs> I I haven't used one of those program I, programs. I can't even remember now what it was called. Was ever whatever Mozilla was back in the early days of email. Thunderbird. It, it was. It was something like that. I never used Outlook exactly, but I used a program like that um, in high school, <laughs> in my very first college days, I think. It's been a very, very, very long time. I jumped on Gmail right away when it launched, and I have not looked back because they have so many features, and they make it so easy to use, and it works everywhere. I really, really like Gmail, so Thunderbird, yep. That's what I used to use. Um, oh, love Endora. Actually, we used that. That is what we had. That is right. I had forgotten all about Eudora. We used that. Um, funny, I had forgotten. Yep, but I just think that the web-based browser emails, they just, have a lot more features and they feel more smooth and user friendly, less clunky. Um, but it, it's really, it's what you're used to is what's going to feel normal and helpful. So, um, so switch to Gmail quick so you can get used to it quickly. <laughs> Sorry. Um, all right, so any other questions before I wrap up? It's been about half an hour. And um, I know mostly I've gotten questions about archiving and labeling. And so I think we addressed that and I will make sure and send out that additional video that I made on creating a filter to label. Oh, the other thing was that email that said you could have your blog subscriptions automatically go to pocket. That is actually not true. <laughs> I had to help a few people out with that and realized, oh, I thought it was possible and it wasn't. So where I have filters sending things automatically to Evernote, and so I looked up, does Pocket have an email where you can send it to Pocket? And it does. Um, but in order to have something automatically forward to an email with Gmail, you have to confirm that you have authority to send to that email address so you're not flooding someone else, right? So in Evernote, that con there will be a confirmation email that Gmail sends to that email that says, I have authority to access this Gmail account. I, I can see that in Evernote and click it and it's okay. But in Pocket, Pocket never registers that, like it never shows up in your to read, you can't see it ever. So you can never confirm it, so you can never set up that automatic filter. So, I'm sorry, I gave you bad advice. Pocket is still a great place to put, put things to read later. Um, if you need some kind of quick app that's easy to sync. So what you would do instead of setting that up, um, is there is a recipe and I can include this link too. It's called a recipe. There's a app or a site out there. I don't know if you've ever heard of it called if this then that. 
It's I F T T T. If this, then that, and it'll, it's a way you can set up automations online. And so you can set up an automation that will automatically put something into your pocket, the pocket app. Um, based on an RSS feed or based on an email, but you have to use that third party integration to get that to work. You, you can't have it automatically, you can't have Gmail automatically filter your emails to pocket like you can to Evernote just because of that confirmation thing. So sorry for that wrong um, piece of information in that email, but um, you can still make it work. You just have to add in that extra step. So if you do a Google, I'll include the link, but if you do a Google search for um, email to pocket, I-F-T-T-T, -T, that'll pop up and be the first thing. So I don't see any more questions coming in. Oh, that's because I'm not going down. Yes, thank you, Courtney. All right, use feed, yeah, an RSS reader really is the best way to keep up with blog posts, I think. But you know, a lot turns out a lot of people don't use RSS feeds. Something like Feedly, um, what's the other, the other one is Blog Eleven. Um, let's see. Concerned about how to deal with important emails I overlooked in the archive process. Go back and find all previously starred emails. Okay. Um, so I don't know if you have received all the emails yet in the five day course, but you can do a quick search and find all the ones that you have start. So you put your cursor up in the search bar for your email and just write is colon starred and it'll pull up all your emails that have been starred in your entire archive or your inbox. All your emails that are starred will only those will be um, pulled up. So then they're not lost. They're not lost in the sea of everything else. You can pull up only those. And that's another reason why starring things is so helpful is because it'll make it way easier to pull those up again. And you can even add that little cue, that little addition. So it's um, is colon starred, all one word, all smashed together. Um, and then even anything else. So you could do bill pay, you know, that's what my, all my, the bills I pay online usually say that, or is starred and to a specific email address or contains the word, you know, you can add that little thing to other search terms as well to build an email search that'll find what you're looking for. Thanks, Courtney. Okay. So, cause that is a concern and it's happened to me before where I've accidentally archived things, but that is starred helps find them fast. Okay. Yes. All right. Endora. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you all for joining me and for doing simplified emails with me. It's been fun. It's been fun just getting the emails and hearing how many thousands of emails have um, been moved out of inboxes and put into archives where you're not, they're not cl visual clutter or decision fatigue clutter waiting to happen. Um, uh, it is just so exciting to see people getting back on top of their inbox and really managing their email in a way that makes sense and isn't overwhelming and isn't a big chore. So you can continue to email me questions if you have them as you work through things. And thank you for joining me on this chat.